Welcome to Medical Frontiers. Today's program is all about what goes on inside the human gut. The topic may make some people a little squeamish, but it's an important one for good health. Our intestines are filled with more than 1,000 species of bacteria. Collectively called the gut flora, they play a major role in preventing lifestyle-related diseases. Japan is a world leader in cutting-edge medical technology and healthcare services. Join us as we explore Medical Frontiers. The balance of bacteria in the gut flora is affected by our lifestyles and what we eat. Researchers have found a link between this balance and lifestyle-related diseases, including diabetes. Scientists in Japan have developed a simple test for checking the gut flora. It helps doctors assess patients' overall health. And Japan's traditional diet is full of foods that promote good intestinal health. We'll share ideas for including them in your daily diet. Our intestines are home to massive amounts of bacteria and other microorganisms. And they're said to outnumber cells in the human body by about 10 to 1. Together, the different varieties of microbes form an ecosystem known as the gut flora. And it's becoming clear that the balance of microbes helps to determine whether we're in good or poor health. Riken, a Japanese research institute, is a leader in the study of gut flora. So this is minus 80 degrees Yoshimi Benno has been researching gut bacteria nearly half a century. He uses this collection of stool samples from 9,000 people that's kept at minus 80 degrees Celsius. Benno has also collected information on people's diets and lifestyles to determine the links to gut bacteria. Gut bacteria account for about 67 percent of human stools. One sample contains around six to seven hundred different species of bacteria. He showed us an image made from one of the samples under a microscope. Can you name any bacteria? For example, bifidus. I mean, we all hear about bifidus and yogurt. Bifidobacteria are the best known good bacteria. The number of bifidobacteria decreases as we age. When we're young, we have plenty of them. But if our diet or lifestyle is bad, the number decreases. Some bacteria in the gut are beneficial, while others are harmful. The overall balance determines the intestinal environment. A special dye helps illustrate the balance of intestinal bacteria. This is a sample from a healthy Japanese person's gut. The pink and red areas are so-called bad bacteria. The bluish ones are so-called good bacteria that are beneficial. In this person, the good bacteria outnumber bad ones that cause harm. Here's a sample from someone who eats an unbalanced diet. There's a lot of pink and red. In other words, bad bacteria dominate. People in Japan tend to have a different balance of bacteria than Westerners who eat a lot of meat. Actually, the balance varies in Japan too, between big cities and rural areas. Eating a lot of vegetables, dietary fiber and fermented foods tends to maintain a good balance. Intestinal bacteria are divided into three groups, depending on how they impact the body. Microbes such as lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria are beneficial, so they're called good bacteria. Bad bacteria cause food poisoning and other problems. Opportunistic bacteria are influenced by whichever bacteria are dominant, so they can be good or bad.
The balance is affected by what we eat. Fermented foods such as yogurt and miso, along with vegetables, mushrooms, seaweed and beans promote good bacteria. These foods are rich in lactic acid bacteria, bifidobacteria, oligosaccharides and dietary fiber. The nutrients from these foods promote the growth of lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria in the intestines. This encourages good bacteria to multiply and become dominant. In contrast, meat and fried foods foster the growth of bad bacteria. These foods are rich in animal proteins and fats. These substances serve as nutrition for bad bacteria and help them to become dominant. This footage shows how oligosaccharides affect the balance of microbes. When they're added, good bacteria, shown in blue, rapidly multiply. So basically it's battling between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So this battle goes on every day in, inside so, of our intestines. Yes, they battle every day. If the good ones win this fight, we remain healthy. As lactic acid bacteria and bifidobacteria break down dietary fiber and oligosaccharides, they release short-chain fatty acids. Researchers believe short-chain fatty acids suppress harmful substances, increasing our resistance to disease. Short-chain fatty acids are beneficial for the wall of the intestine. They activate the cells in the wall, making it stronger. As a result, toxins released by bad bacteria have a harder time getting through. This helps prevent infections and allergies. As bad bacteria multiply, they release large amounts of toxins that attack the intestinal wall. This weakens the wall's defenses, making it easier for the toxins to spread to other parts of the body. If the attacks continue, we become ill. So, Dr. Benner, what sort of illnesses or conditions can result when the gut flora is out of balance? Intestinal bacteria live in the colon, and the colon is vulnerable to more types of disease than any other organ. For instance, colon cancer, colon polyps, and ulcerative colitis. More recently, obesity and diabetes have also been linked to bacteria in the colon. So I think controlling these bacteria are vital for making our bodies more resistant to disease. A testing kit developed in Japan provides a simple way to check the balance of gut flora. Users put a stool sample in a plastic container and send it to a lab. About a month later, the results become available. Venture company based in Tokyo developed the kit with Benno's research team. They analyzed stool samples from more than 2,000 people, along with information on their habits and health, and used it to make a database. The company compares this data to assess samples taken with the kit. Yasunori Kawasaki has been recommending the kit to patients who complain of stomach discomfort. Yusuke Hirokane has come in to find out his results. Your bifidobacteria level is within the average range. Your intestines seem to be fine. 
Hirokane's test shows he has an average level of bifidobacteria, one of the good types. The test shows a higher than average level of lactic acid bacteria, which is also beneficial. The level of butyric acid producing bacteria, which generate a lot of short chain fatty acids, was about average. And he scored above average for bacterial diversity. This indicates that his intestines have a good balance of microbes that perform a variety of functions making him less susceptible to disease. Do you have any recommendations about diet? I mean, is there a menu of foods that are good for the gut? I recommend you eat vegetables, especially root vegetables like burdock, as well as soybeans, seaweed, and so on. Try to focus on meals centered on these kinds of foods. I didn't know before that keeping the gut in good health can help maintain our overall health. That was surprising. Come to think of it, we don't really need to eat a lot of fatty foods. I guess I need to rethink things and change my mindset. The results for another one of Kawasaki's patients were markedly different. The patient is in her 40s and developed an ulcer in her colon. The test indicates her bifidobacteria level is slightly below average. The level of butyric acid producing bacteria, another good microbe, is extremely low. In fact, it's close to zero. The woman also has insufficient bacterial diversity, making her more prone to disease. Kawasaki prescribed lactic acid bacteria capsules to improve the condition of her gut flora, along with medications for her ulcer. The results suggest the condition of her gut flora is pretty bad. But if we can turn things around, I think we might be able to improve her condition. A group of researchers at Juntendo University has found a potential link between gut flora and diabetes. Akio Kanazawa is their leader. The team analyzed stool samples from 50 diabetes patients and 50 healthy subjects. They found a significant gap between the diabetes patients and the healthy subjects with regard to five intestinal bacteria. At maximum, the gap was 10 to 1. They also found variations in the amount of short-chain fatty acids generated by good bacteria. The levels of two short-chain fatty acids were lower in diabetes patients. A decrease in short-chain fatty acids causes the intestinal wall to become weaker. Toxins attack the wall and damage it. Researchers believe this allows toxins to seep into blood vessels. This is known as leaky gut syndrome. Kanazawa's team examined blood samples from diabetes patients to confirm the presence of toxins. They used genetic analysis equipment to identify and measure toxins and bacteria inside the blood. Compared with the healthy subjects, 
those with diabetes had higher levels of LBP, a toxin that causes inflammation. We believe toxins generated by gut bacteria enter the blood vessels through weakened intestinal walls. It seems that once the toxins get into the blood vessels, they're carried throughout the body. The researchers' next step was to figure out how an increase of toxins in the blood promotes diabetes. Healthy people have adequate amounts of insulin in their blood. Insulin helps cells take in sugar for energy. But when the concentration of toxins in the blood rises, the surfaces of the cells become damaged, leading to inflammation. This compromises insulin's effectiveness and prevents cells from taking in sugar. As a result, blood sugar levels rise, and this leads to diabetes. The excess sugar also harms the blood vessel walls. This can lead to complications, including hardening of the arteries and neuropathy. If the balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut is upset, probiotics can restore it and improve the gut flora. We'd like to confirm whether taking probiotics leads to an improvement in diabetes patients' gut flora. And we also hope to confirm if an improvement in the balance of the gut flora leads to a strengthening of the intestinal wall. Confirming these things would prove that our hypothesis is correct. So, Dr. Bennett, by understanding the gut flora in more detail, mm -hmm. what do you think could it possibly change in the future, in the future of medicine or the future mm -hmm. of healthcare or longevity? I think we need to look at the extent to which we can use gut bacteria to prevent disease. In the 20th century, people rushed to the hospital for medicine after they got sick. But in the 21st century, we should use wisdom and knowledge to prevent disease. I think that kind of mindset is important for making people healthier. Medical costs are rising rapidly in Japan. We need to take a new look at gut flora for achieving health and longevity. So, Dr. Bennett, by changing our diet, that, does that mean that we can actually change the balance so it's of our gut flora? Exactly. I changed my diet and began eating yogurt and vegetables when I was in my 50s. The important thing is to nurture the health of your gut flora. And it's never too late, even if you're in your 70s or 80s. Improving your lifestyle is the first step for a healthy gut flora. So what's the most important thing that I can do from today? Doing exercise regularly and eating vegetables are important. You don't have to be a vegetarian, but it's best if the ratio of vegetables to meat is three to one. The condition of our intestines influences our health. So a healthy gut is the key to a healthy life. In the very famous district of Ginza in Tokyo and behind me you'll see is the Kabuki theatre which actually holds regular Kabuki plays and around the Kabuki theatre there's lots of shops which sell local specialities from all around Japan including those that can help balance our good bacteria. <laughs> so today Dr. Benno and I are going to go in search of some of these foods which help promote a really good healthy gut flora. So this shop actually sells produce from Gumma Prefecture. Mm -hmm. We have the vegetables. This is a specialty of Shimonita in Gunma Prefecture. 
So what is, how is this different? It's quite a bit thicker than the regular. Yeah, bigger, bigger. It's thick and sweet. And is this specifically good for the gut flora? Yes, leeks are good for gut bacteria. This is kikurage. What is kikurage? They're dried mushrooms. They're extremely rich in dietary fiber, so they're very good for gut bacteria. So we've come to the second shop, which is actually has a specializing in Okinawa, Okinawa produce. Now, Okinawa is the island which is the very south of Japan, and it's known for its longevity. Ah, uh, do you know these? This is, yes, I've actually, this is called umibudo, which is also yes, grapes of the, um, grapes of the sea. And I've actually had it before when I was in Okinawa. They're very chewy. They're seaweed. Mm. Dr. Beno, is this also really good for gut flora as well? Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. Look, here's some mozuku. Uh, mozuku. Seaweed such as mozuku contains a lot of dietary fiber, but in fact, there are two kinds of fiber, insoluble and soluble. Insoluble fiber bulks up the stool, and soluble fiber makes it softer. Shall we try some? Let's have a taste. Exactly. Please try some. Very smooth. Mm. Mm. It's actually in a little bit of vinegar. So it has this really lovely vinegar flavor. And it tastes a lot better than it looks. Oh, yes, they have it. Miki. What is Miki? Miki is yogurt made of rice. It's made by adding ground sweet potatoes to boiled rice. It's usually white. It contains barley, too. It's a treasure trove of lactic acid bacteria and dietary fiber. So this is a great drink for our It combines prebiotics and probiotics, so it's symbiotic. Can I ask, Dr. Benner, we've talked a lot, of, we just talked about drinks. What about, for example, wine? What about beer? What about sake, rice wine? How are they for our gut flora? Well, alcohol can cause colon cancer, so drinking too much is never a good idea. What about a little bit? Yes, a little bit. Up to one cup of sake or two glasses of wine should be fine. Okay, so a little bit's okay. <laughs> I always end up drinking more than that and then get scolded by my wife. So we've come to the third shop, which is from Kyushu, um, a prefecture called Oita. These are all specialties from Oita. They're good for health. I'm getting hungry now, mm. uh, looking at all of these delicious food. Okay, let's go in and eat, shall we? Please. It looks absolutely beautiful. And it's just, it's really interesting. Obviously, it's a traditional Japanese balance with lots of different little dishes with different things. Miso soup has a lot of things in it. Vegetables such as daikon, tofu, and this. What's that? It's okay. seaweed. So that's a seaweed. What, what's it called? A viscous seaweed called kurome. It's very viscous. They've marinated the yellowtail in koji rice mold to soften it up. These vegetables are fermented with lactic acid bacteria and yeast. Eating a lot of fermented foods and vegetables, that's characteristic of Oita cuisine, and it promotes longevity. Stewed vegetables. The crunchiness is really nice. And it has such a lovely balance of umami as well. Really delicious. The rice has hijiki seaweed. It's actually a really nice, delicious combination with the rice because I think sometimes plain rice can be a little bit bland, a little bit sometimes, so it's a really nice combination to mm. have these together. But Dr. Vanessa, this is sweet potato, isn't it? Mm. Yes, it is. The dietary fiber in sweet potatoes is half soluble and half insoluble. It's 50-50. Really 50-50? Mm. Sweet potatoes contain a substance called yalapin, 
It's known to help move the bowels. Dietary fiber bulks up your stool, so sweet potatoes are very good for you. So we should be eating a lot more sweet potato. <laughs> yes. I'd say you have to eat at least 100 grams to get the benefits. I think maybe we had 20 grams. We need to be eating more sweet potato. So obviously, Dr. Benno, it's quite difficult to buy all of these different ingredients and also to prepare them. What would you recommend for people who are living overseas who can't, mm -hmm. for example, buy things like hijiki, different seaweeds or different <laughs> Japanese, Japanese ingredients? I recommend this drink. It has yogurt, a little soy milk, a banana, soy pulp, and a pinch of matcha tea powder. Try it. Mm. It's so creamy and so smooth and so, it's delicious. I drink 600 cc's of it a day. 600, which is about three times as three, much as this? Three cups. Of, cups of. But it's lovely and creamy. I can, I, can understand, <laughs> I can understand why you're drinking it every day. Soy pulp is rich in dietary fiber. Soy milk and banana both contain oligosaccharides. So you get oligosaccharides, dietary fiber and bacteria from the yogurt all at once. It's very good for the gut. It's the Benno special. Benno, delicious special. <laughs> you know, there's so much that we can do every single day, I think, and it's been fascinating, you know, understanding some of the research and, and, and how much of a, a difference our, our gut bacteria makes to our overall health and our happiness as well. And the link, I think, with, with longevity in Japan is fascinating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think Japanese people owe their longevity to traditional foods, a diet rich in vegetables, seaweed, mushrooms and beans, has nourished a healthy gut. But it's not just Japanese food that's good. Each country has its own distinctive foods. People outside Japan can make good use of locally available ingredients to get the same kinds of benefits. That would encourage the creation of the kind of intestinal environment that contributes to good health. It's been absolutely fascinating. Dr. Benno, thank you so much for your time. We'll bring you the second part of our program about the gut flora on the next Medical Frontiers. And we'll tell you about efforts here in Japan to harness intestinal bacteria for better immunity. So please join us again next time.